The Xiaomi 13 series is finally here and I have the top end variant with me here today, the Xiaomi 13 Pro. Not only does it check all the right boxes, but may very well be a contender for best smartphone of 2023, even though the year has barely started. The phone is set for a global launch later this year, so global pricing is still unknown, but it starts at around 700 US dollars in China, and trust me, you get more than what you pay for. The Xiaomi 13 Pro's main improvement over its predecessor has to be its camera system. Okay, well, the 50 megapixel ultra wide sensor is identical, but the 13 Pro adapts the large 50 megapixel Sony IMX 989 one inch main camera sensor, which was recently seen in the 12S Ultra. And while the telephoto sensor has the same 50 megapixel count, it's now a floating mechanism which allows for infinity focusing. Other than the camera tech, the 13 Pro now sports a ceramic water resistant design, a larger battery, houses the new TSMC made Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, faster LPDDR5X RAM, next gen UFS 4.0 storage, all new MIUI 14 software software skin and more. All that said, can Xiaomi's latest top-end flagship set the bar for all future 2023 flagships? Let's find out in my full review of the Xiaomi 13 Pro. The 13 Pro comes in four different colors. We have green, white, and black, which are all ceramic. I have the green version. There's also a blue variant, which comes in a vegan leather style back, which I must say looks quite intriguing, but I'm pretty happy that they've brought ceramics back. The new design is pretty awesome, and we have a massive 4,820 milliamp hour battery packed in here, as well as 120 watt wire charging, 50 watt wireless charging to match its predecessor, the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 CPU, Adreno 740 integrated GPU, LPDDR5X RAM, UFS 4.0 storage, 3,400 millimeter squared liquid cooling system, dual SIM 5G, Wi Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and NFC. We also have that wonderful ceramic back, not to mention we have a Gorilla Glass Victus display and all the frames are indeed aluminum. We get an IP68 dust and water resistance this time around, and though it is a tad bit heavier than its predecessor, as well as a bit thicker, there's very good reason as to why. When it comes to cameras, we get a 14 millimeter ultra wide sensor, which is the same one that we saw in the 12 Pro, that being a 50 megapixel isocell JN1 sensor, and a very identical 50 megapixel isocell JN1 a telephoto camera, just like we saw in the 12 Pro, though this time it is 75 millimeters. It is known as a floating sensor since it is split into two parts, which actually move and allows users to use the telephoto camera close up for infinity focusing at a close range of just 10 centimeters. And as you can see from the results, this is no gimmick to most. And last and certainly not least, we have the 23 millimeter main camera sensor, which is no doubt the 50 megapixel Sony IMX 989 sensor, the exact same one inch sensor that we found inside the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. This time it is coated with a Leica branded lens. Speaking of Leica, we do have a couple different Leica filters, starting off with Vivid, which makes colors pop quite a bit. Natural, which looks pretty neutral, as well as black and white natural. I mean, the name kind of points to what it does and black and white high contrast. We also have two different options, Lake of Vibrant and Lake Authentic. You have to choose one of them. Lake of Vibrant is what most users would use. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using Lake of Vibrant for the remainder of showing all the photos and videos over here. Kickstarting things off with the 50 megapixel ultra wide sensor. It takes a fantastic shot, bidding it down 12.5 megapixels using four to one bidding looks great. We have a 50 megapixel main over here, shifting down to its bind mode. Once again, looks fantastic. Pretty much on par with the 12S Ultra. We do have that 3.2 times optical zoom thanks to the telephoto sensor. We can do five times digital as well as 10 times digital. We can also do 30 times digital, which doesn't look too bad. 50 times starts to get a little bit grainy, but you can still make out what this bowl looks like. And 70 times is the max zoom and not 120 times like we saw with the 12S Ultra. Can also shoot macro shots here, which look as they should using an ultra wide sensor. And we can take portrait shots. 
Now there are a bunch of different options. We can do a full body one times portrait using the main, the 3.2 times portrait using the telephoto. We also have a black and white bokeh, which sits at about 1.4X, 2.2X swirly bokeh. We have 3.2X portrait, the standard portrait mode that is. And we have a four times portrait using soft focus. So I'm not sure when I'd actually ever use this. We do have 1080p 30fps main video bokeh, which looks great, but most phones can do 4K cinematic video these days. And we also have 1080p 1920 fps is slow motion video, which looks absolutely fantastic. There's 1080p 60 FPS main video, which is fairly stable with no stabilization modes enabled. We also have steady video, which uses 1080p 30 FPS main video. Looks okay, but dips a bit in quality. And steady video pro, which is the same 1080p 30 FPS, but utilizes the ultra wide camera. And of course, we also have 4K 60 FPS ultra wide video. And it actually looks pretty breathtaking considering this is an ultra wide sensor and it's taking 4K 60 FPS footage, some of the best footage I've seen at 4K ever on a Xiaomi device. 4K 60 FPS main looks fantastic as you saw at the start, focusing on a close range object and then focusing on the background right after looks brilliant. Same thing with 8K 24 FPS video, though we can only use the main camera for 8K this time around and not the ultra wide and the telephoto like we saw with the 12S Ultra, unfortunately, but you'd only really use 8K with the main anyway. We can also shoot 8K 24 FPS using the main camera at night. And though it actually does a fairly decent job, not to mention stability is actually pretty decent when recording at 8K where it's usually pretty choppy. It actually handles like quite well at night. 4K 60 FPS using the main looks great. Once again, it's not the brightest, but it packs so much detail and it actually looks like it's nighttime, which I absolutely adore. Now moving on to the night mode video option on the right, you can see things have brightened up, but detail has taken a bit of a knock. It still does a great job at it. And while the ultra wide sensor lacks night video, we do have a 24 FPS option at 4K, which once again, brightens things up nicely. Now we can shoot 4K 60 FPS ultra wide, but this is essentially unusable at night. Rather stick to 30 or 24 FPS when recording 4K using the ultra wide sensors. You can barely see anything at 60 FPS with this ultra wide sensor. And taking photos with the ultra wide with night mode on doesn't make a huge difference. What does make a big difference is the night mode option for the main sensor, which drastically improves the shot great dynamic range over here and compensates for all the issues around it, especially when you take a night shot with the telephoto. Five times digital night mode on makes the hugest difference, pops with color and detail. Moving on to 10 times digital with night mode off and night mode on, and it actually still uses the telephoto sensor, does a great job. There's no night mode option for 30 times zoom as well as 50 times or 70 times, but it still does a decent job even when zooming up that close. Now, when it comes to taking portraits of a person, which is me. Night mode on doesn't make a huge difference, but actually taking a portrait shot looks pretty decent at 1x and 3.2x using the telephoto doesn't do a half bad job at night either. The cameras on the back of the Xiaomi 13 Pro are almost better than the 12S Ultra, which cost more and is older with lesser hardware. Not to mention it's a hell of a lot better than its predecessor, the 12 Pro. And the cameras are very flexible and extremely user-friendly. I can't say I have any issues when it comes to camera performance on Xiaomi's new top dog. On the right side of the device, we have a power button. Above that, a non-split volume rocker. At the bottom, we have a dual SIM 5G tray. No expandable storage, unfortunately, though that's pretty much the trend these days. A water resistant seal is there too. We do have USB 2.0 type C, not three, unfortunately. And we do have two dual stereo speakers, one at the bottom and one in the earpiece. Not to mention, we still have an IR blaster for some reason. And we do have a 21 millimeter selfie camera, largely unchanged from last year, that being 32 megapixels. The selfies you can take at 0.8X or 1X, but you can only take portrait selfies at 1X. They still come out great and have almost perfect edge detection. And when I took this photo over here, the clouds in the background were way overexposed, but after I got to the results, it actually picked up all the clouds and even the silver lining. So taking selfies during the day are pretty spot on in terms of detail of the subject, as well as blurring the background nicely when it comes to portraits. What's up guys, this is Technic recording a 1080p 30fps selfie video on the brand new Xiaomi 13 Pro. Unfortunately, it is capped at 30 FPS and 1080p when recording with the selfie cam. Let me know your thoughts on the video as well as the audio quality.
It is a bit disappointing that one of the best camera smartphones in the world limits its selfie video to just 1080p, 30fps, but you'll be happy to know that we can still record portrait video at the same 1080p, 30fps when using the selfie cam. Let me know your thoughts on the audio and the video quality of it. Like I just said, it is a bit of a bummer that the selfie video is capped at 1080p, 30fps, and Bokeh at night looks okay, I guess you could say. 1080p, 30fps, regular selfie video at night. Once again, it's a bit janky. It blows my face now and then with stability issues. Taking photos at night look okay. Kind of blows the foreground a bit at 0.8x, even with night mode on. Night mode off at 1x looks slightly better. Night mode on kind of makes the lighting a bit better, I guess you could say. Portrait mode does a great job of edge detection, of blurring the background, but once again, it's not the best photo around. So one of the biggest caveats with the new 13 Pro is the fact that the selfie camera is not flagship level. Xiaomi flagship phones have not used flagship level selfie cameras in I have no idea how long. And if they were to fix that, just that one issue, this would be the go-to Android device for any user out there. Powering the device on, we'll get to that always, always on display, which is nice and bright and vivid. And we do have an under display fingerprint sensor, though it is still optical. It would have been nice to see an ultrasonic sensor over here, but it's optical. It still works as it should. We do have a bunch of different wallpapers, such as the neon circles that you just saw as well as pebbles, which actually changes when you switch over to dark mode. It makes the rest of the wallpaper dark, which is awesome. We have MIUI 14 wallpapers, which are not live, but they look pretty decent. And we also have the Curves wallpapers, which are actually my favorite and really do pop with color and truly show off the display. We do have 2D face unlock, which uses the selfie camera. No 3D face unlock. We've never really seen that on a Xiaomi device before. And we have a 6.73 inch LTPO 2.0 E6 AMOLED display. It is dual curve, not quad curve, 20 by nine aspect ratio that is. It supports HDR10 plus and Dolby Vision content. It has 1,900 nits of peak brightness and 1,200 nits of brightness on the whole surface, which is a huge jump up from its predecessors. We also have 1920 Hertz PWM dimming, which minimizes eye strain, a huge leap forward from the 367 that we saw on the 12 Pro and 12S Ultra. And yes, we do have the same WQHD plus resolution with 522 PPI. Not to mention we have that one to 120 Hertz refresh rate thanks to LTPO tech. I guess you could say it is LTPO 3.0 tech considering it has PWM dimming at such a high rate and it does a great job. It's nice and fluid jumping around the phone in apps. It's supported by most apps, not so much gaming. We'll get to that a little bit later, but we've dipped down to 240 Hertz touch sampling rates from the 480 Hertz that we saw last year. We do have MIUI. 14 skinned over Android 13. It has a lot less bloatware and there are a whole bunch of new features such as being able to change the size of every single individual icon to your pleasing. It looks aesthetically pleasing and we also have large folders which is pretty much copied and pasted from other Chinese Android manufacturers which have done so. It does a great job and as you'd expect, you can just tap straight on the large folder, an icon within the large folder to jump straight into that app instead of having to go into the folder. We can also customize icons and change the icon size as well as remove the icon text, which we've seen from Oppo in the past, but I like to see the text as I'm sure most of you do too. We also have the app drawer over here, which you can customize and categorize as we've seen from previous MIUI software as well as the control center and notification panel. There are a bunch of different wallpaper and personalization options which we've seen in the past. Nothing really new over here. What is new though is that we have double tap and triple tap at the back like we've seen from Apple where you can double tap to take a screenshot or triple tap to open up the camera. And we also have full support for Google services even on the Chinese variants. Now when it comes to touch we actually have a separate panel over here and you can customize your haptic feedback and the haptic feedback is actually one of the best I've used. I would put it up there with the best of the best with individual taps moving to the next and you really do feel it. It is just so darn pleasing. Not to mention we do have those dual stereo speakers paired with Dolby Atmos, but how does it stack up against two of the best sounding smartphones around?
Moving on to gaming, we do have Game Turbo Overlay, where you can open up mini windows such as Spotify. You can even pin them to the right hand side, which we'll close a little bit later. We also have different filters, which you can choose from, as well as a game performance mode, which as mentioned, can increase the performance of the game. We're gonna kickstart things off with Genshin Impact, highest possible graphics, max FPS. The game is capped at 60, so even if the phone can do more than 60, which this can, it is always gonna be capped at 60. Though we're getting a stable 59 FPS on average with a minute 47, max of 63, which blows all other Androids out of the water. It does a fantastic job. We also have Call of Duty Mobile over here, medium graphics, ultra FPS. Now, ultra FPS, can actually do 120 FPS, but the Xiaomi 13 Pro with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset is capping at 60 and the previous Xiaomi devices did as well. When it comes to Bullet Force, it is also capping at 60 FPS, something that the Xiaomi 12S Ultra and 12 Pro could hit at a higher refresh rate, that being around 120 FPS on those devices, it is lacking on this, which is a bit of a deal breaker. When it comes to Real Racing 3, it also has an unlimited game FPS cap. Though the Xiaomi 13 Pro and its predecessors all cap it at 60 FPS, which is once again a bit of a deal breaker, but hopefully this gets fixed with the global launch. We do have 12 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM, and you can add an additional seven gigs to bring it up to a total of 19 gigs. And we have that new TSMC manufactured Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 octa-core CPU. It has identical clock speeds when compared to the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipsets, though it is stacked slightly different. We now have a format of 122 three instead of one, three, four, one being the main core, three being performance and four being efficiency. Now we have one main core, two performance, another two performance, obviously a different structure. And then we have three efficiency cores and not four, which means that we get an improvement of performance by 35% and it is 40% more power efficient. Not to mention, we now have the latest Adreno 740 integrated GPU, which has 25% better performance and is 45% more power efficient. So I'm super keen to see what this does in a battery drain test. So stay tuned for that one. And when pairing it with the high performance mode, which we still have within the battery settings, we got an N22 score of 1,285,852 points, which blows the IQ 11 out of the water with the same chipset as well as its two predecessors and even the iPhone 14 Pro Max. When it comes to Geekbench, the only thing that beat it was the iPhone with the A16 Bionic chip, but the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 still got a single core score of 1,479 and multi-core of 5,082, which once again is quite a bit better than the IQ 11 rocking the same chip and leaps ahead of the Xiaomi 12S Ultra and 12 Pro. And last but certainly not least, three Mark Wildlife Extreme. Of course, Extreme renders at 4K and we got a score year of 3,752 with an average frame rate of 22.5. Nothing has come close to beating the iPhone, which gets an average of 19.8 and this has surpassed that. So the Xiaomi 13 Pro absolutely destroys benchmarks thanks to the new Qualcomm chipset. And while it's very stable when playing games, it's a bit of a bummer that it doesn't yet support high frame rate gaming, but who knows, maybe this will be addressed before the global launch. Other than that one complaint, the Xiaomi 13 Pro delivers. I mean, really, really delivers on all fronts. It provides the best software experience I've ever seen on a Xiaomi device. It has a breathtaking display, which is now brighter and packs in 1920 hertz PWM dimming. It's almost unmatched when it comes to camera performance, houses the latest and greatest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, incorporates faster LPDDR5X RAM, uses the latest UFS 4.0 storage, has a larger battery, a new ceramic design, and finally, has an IP68 dust and water resistance certification. Let me know your thoughts on the Xiaomi 13 Pro in the comment section down below. As for me, the Xiaomi 13 Pro really does check all the right boxes, but we've hardly started the year. So there's gonna be a lot of phones to release pretty soon. It's gonna have no doubt some tough competition going forward. This is Tech Neck and I'll catch you in the next one.